I'd like to change gears a little now and consider standing waves on a string. So this is a reminder of material we've seen in a previous course. The standing waves on a string, the allowed modes, that is, are given by this equation here, where the nth mode, y n x of t, is given by some amplitude with the spatial dependence, sine k n x, and the time dependence, cos omega n t plus phi m. So the frequency omega n depends on the mode index, the speed of the wave on the string c, and the length of the string l. c is given by this equation here with the tension and linear density. The wave vector kn is just depending on n and l. In this example here, I've set l equal to pi. If we look at the motion of the first three modes, so this is n equal to 1, 2, and 3, we see they have some pattern that looks like this. Now, these modes can coexist. We can have a linear superposition of these modes. If we add these three modes up, we get some time evolution that looks like this. Now, my claim is, and this is reasonable given what we've seen with the Fourier series that we've been talking about, is that if we have some initial condition of the string with some arbitrary initial shape, then we can write that down as a sum of the modes with carefully chosen amplitude and phase, such that the initial condition is expressed as a sum of the modes in this standing wave basis. Then to evolve the string in time, we just let each of the modes evolve with the correct frequency and we can see how the string will evolve. So, some standing wave pattern due to initial string shape can be modeled by breaking the initial conditions y x naught and the velocity y dot x naught into a sum of the modes. So it's exactly the same concept as a standard Fourier series, but now we're using a specific basis that is applicable to the string. It satisfies the boundary conditions of the string, so it's the basis of allowed modes. So the sum at time equal to zero would look like this. We have some amplitude dn of these sine waves here, the spatial dependence, and time equal to zero, we just have this cos phi n here. And then to write down the full function of time and space, we add the time dependence back in, and we get this sum here. So the job then is, now that we've restricted the Fourier series to the allowed modes of the string, we need to find the amplitudes dn and the phases phi n. All right, let's consider a specific example, which will be an assignment question. We have a string that has its equilibrium position sitting along the axis here, but we're going to give it an initial condition where we just pull it out sideways up to some height in the center of the string. So it makes us a triangle and we're going to hold it there stationary. So the initial condition is this function here, which we can write like this, and the initial velocity is zero because we're holding it still and letting it go. So this is the starting shape of the string, and when we let it go, what happens? Well, to find out, we can apply the same method we used to derive the Fourier series back on slide six, but this time we're going to use just the allowed modes as the basis. So these are these functions here, these sine kn, with the time dependence cos omega and t with this phi n. And we need both the position and the velocity to fit the dn and the phi n. If you want to see what happens in this situation, then you can look at this YouTube video here, which shows the evolution of a string with precisely this starting condition. This is a model of a similar situation where instead of plucking the string by pulling it up in the center, I've pulled it up to one side. In this case, the sum of the modes is given by this, where the dn is given by this equation here. The phi n in this case actually is equal to zero. And so to model the behavior of this string, I just write down this sum, I feed it into a computer, and then evolve time and adding up all of these modes at the different time steps. And when I do that, I see evolution that looks like this. And you can compare this to this YouTube video here, which shows this situation. And there will be differences between these models and reality. And this YouTube video here discusses some of these differences, which are interesting to think about. I also have a question that you can think about to do with this uh, Fourier series that we looked at where we expand in the mode basis. Previously, we did a Fourier expansion of half a sine wave and we came up with a Fourier series that looks like this. It's a sum of cosine waves with some amplitudes and an offset here. So this was the Fourier series that we derived for this half sine wave. But a half sine wave like this is also 
a mode of a string if we clamp it here and here. And in this case, the mode expansion looks like this. Now you can see this is made of sine functions with some amplitude, and this is made of cosines with some amplitude and some offset. So we get two different answers. And my question is why? And we can puzzle this out and discuss it in a workshop.